with no flesh, no blood or no organs. They didn't have hair up on their head. And they would cry and they would weep, but no tears would come. Mary Kay Baxter knows hell is real. She visited hell repeatedly over a period of 30 days. When I was uh, uh, killed, um, I was instantly transported to uh, Heaven's Gate. Don Piper knows heaven's reality. He saw it after he died in a head-on collision. Numerous eyewitnesses have visited heaven or hell. Betty Eady and all these near-death experiences embraced by the light. Uh, death is a friend. It's, it's, a, you know, it's that luminous uh, light that beckons us forward. I don't read the scripture that way. Death is ugly. Death is the enemy. But in Christ it has been defeated. Peter Jones, author of Spirit Wars, says these deceptions about the afterlife would even let Adolf Hitler qualify for a good afterlife once he works through his mistakes. That's the lie, the devil, because the devil is the father of, the, of lies and the, and the murderer from the beginning. And he is attempting to convince people that death is not the last enemy, but our friend. Mary Kay it Baxter says people really do need Jesus to save them from hell. And Jesus showed her the horrors of hell through miraculous visions. Everyone that Christ showed me knew why they were in hell. I'm not talking about one or two people. I'm talking about multitudes cast into hell. Baxter says the whole point of her experience was to keep people out of hell. And many times uh, Jesus cried in hell. And it, it, tears would run down his face. And he would look and he'd say, for these I died, but it's too late. Baxter says she was also shown heaven's glories. You don't see God. You just see the glory, the power, the lightning. You see the throne. You see angels all in order around the throne. And people like Pastor Don Piper say they've also seen miraculous visions of heaven. A semi slammed into his car on this bridge and killed him. Instantly, he was before the gates of heaven. There really were pearly gates. Peering through the gates, Don saw an incredible light. Behind that portal was such a light that I don't conceive of how you could see it in an earthly body. It could only be envisioned in a heavenly body because it's too bright. And, says Don, there was music, that of a literal angelic choir. As awesome as the sight was, the sound was even more amazing. I heard literally thousands of praise songs. Everything was praising God. And despite the widespread unbelief in a literal heaven or hell, Real-life testimonies like Piper's and Baxter's support the view of heaven and hell found in the world's most popular book. The Bible contains the most expert information available about the nature of the afterlife. After all, God himself is the one who created the afterlife. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing more compelling than hearing reports of people who have actually visited heaven or hell. Well, here are two examples that will keep you on the edge of your seat. I remember the pain, and then all of a sudden the pain left me, and there was angels on either side. Everything was just beautiful, and it was all green, all green pastures, and then there was trees on either side, and then there was streets of gold, and it was gold. It was like transparent gold, like to what you would see, maybe a sun shining through the clouds, and it was just beautiful. And so we were just having a great time praising the Lord. The story you just heard is clearly dramatic a real person with a real encounter with a real heaven. But that forces us to ask the question, what about a real hell? My spirit just completely went down a black tunnel. And um, I saw total blackness. The tunnel was um, like a spiral. I heard screams and I heard moans. And they were very real to me. And the next thing that happened is um, I went directly back up to my body. I know, I believe, I believe that I died. When you die, where will you go? Michelle and Heather will tell you it's one of two places, heaven or hell. What determines our eternal destination? Heather says God took her to heaven because she's a born-again believer. Michelle's afterlife experience was clearly the opposite. But why? I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in the devil. I didn't believe in hell. I didn't believe in heaven. So I didn't really, I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't think about that. I just wanted, I just wanted to end it.
But Michelle will emphatically tell you Hell it didn't hell. end. Hell is a real place. It's not a uh, makeup fairy tale. It's not something that uh, religion is made up to try to scare you. I know that I didn't imagine it. I believe that I was only dipped in the very tip of it. It was very obvious that, that whatever I heard, these screams and moans, these people were in pain and anguish. Jesus Christ's own words say that angels will weed out those who do evil and will throw them in the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Christ goes on to say, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And how do you get to the kingdom? Jesus clearly answers that question too. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Michelle heard that message. Jesus Christ is my everything. He spared me so that I could tell people about this. Other people go off into eternity every day and they get in a car wreck and if they don't have Jesus Christ in their life, they're gonna go to hell. And they, they don't get a second chance. A lot of people think, I'm a good person, you know? I don't do this, I don't cheat, I don't, I don't steal. And that's how Satan is so deceptive because he'll, he'll make you think, well, you're okay, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, or you don't need God or whatever. And there's so many, there's so many good people that are gonna go to hell if they, if they don't turn their lives over to Christ. One night and went down to a little market going inside to purchase some things. And on the way in to that market, I met a gentleman coming out the door and an argument erupted. And uh, before I knew it, I had just hit him, knocked him down. And he fell into a, a stack of bottles. The bottles bursted. And uh, immediately he leaped up with a broken bottle and began to stab at me. I lifted my left arm to try to stop the, the blow and the bottle actually severed the biceps muscle, the uh, major arteries in my arm and I was bleeding to death in just a matter of seconds. But full of anger and hatred and rage, I kept fighting and kept bleeding. My little son was screaming, he was hysterical, but the man that ran the store came over and said, if, if you don't get to a hospital, you'll bleed to death in just a few minutes. So he actually took me in my own automobile to the hospital. And when we entered the emergency room, I was barely conscious. And as the uh, medical attendants began to work on me, I could hear their voices. And I could hear them saying, we can't help him. He'll have to be transported to another hospital. Probably will lose the arm. And as they loaded me into an ambulance, my wife had arrived by that time and got in the ambulance with me. But as they pulled out of the parking lot of that hospital, a young paramedic looked down into my face and I could barely see him, I was so weak. But he said, sir, you need Jesus Christ. And I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know what he was talking about. So my reaction to that was to begin cursing. And uh, again, he stated to me, you need Jesus. And as he was talking...